And we're back here at the Fine Home Building House 2022 in Prairie Village, Kansas. Uh, last time you were out, we were probably talking about under slab details and then getting our concrete slab poured uh, for our basement finish, as well as here for our garage. But now we're excited because we got a little dry enough to frame and we're gonna get started on our mud sill. So you'll see the guys are pretty stoked today because we have some new tech on the job. Uh, these guys have been framing for a long time and they're awfully good at it, but there are some new innovations in the market that are gonna make it a little easier for them. Things are gonna go a little faster. We actually broke the Stabila layout station out during the foundation stage, but we're gonna have it again. These guys are all gonna learn how to use this kind of push button simple piece of gear to square walls very quickly and accurately. This is on the tripod, but if you've got a wall and you wanted to set it right on the edge of a wall, you can do the same thing, cool. all right? So you don't have to have it on a tripod. That point down is gonna be right on your edge. Then you can run this out and put this on another edge out there and, mm -hmm. and make sure that wall's square. All right, so we just got done marking out our sill plate on our tall walls. We started with going two and a half inches off the inside of our foundation wall. So this is our inside of our plate. And then as far as 150 feet, we can mark our second line. And then we can run a chalk line across it and that's good, a good reference point. You can create multiple marks and then double check everything. I can't wait till we use it a little bit more and really get familiar with it. So the process for this is pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've seen articles in Fine Home Building about it before, but the, the mud sill connection is one of the notorious leaks in a residential home, historically. We've solved that problem, uh, as many before us have, with sealant and a foam gasket. There's also higher end gaskets that you can use that are self-sealing, supposedly. Uh, what we're using today is an approach of two beads of big stretch uh, across the top of wall. Then we set a foam, standard foam sill sealer gasket in that big stretch caulking. Then we do another bead across the center line of the bolts and around every bolt. Uh, and we do that for a couple of reasons. You can see here, we have a top of wall condition that is generally flat, but not perfect. We have some raised areas, some imperfections that would make it hard to trust that as a flat to flat mating surface. So we can't just you know, put down that foam seal and expect it to keep the air from moving through that connection. And so what we're doing is applying the sealant below and then above the foam gasket to really kind of supercharge it and make it adhere to both the concrete and to the bottom of the mud sill. One of the things that we like about this strategy is like most of the strategies that we utilize, it's easily inspectable. Being able to see continuity of one material to the next gives us a, a ready assurance that we've done our job effectively. One of the things that we like is what I call full mouche, where you can see the sealant squeezing out from underneath the gasket, and you can actually see it in the foreground here as well. The continuity of the white line here, at no point is there a gap. Oh, look, there's one right there, but look, fixed. So when they squish the board down, that mooshing action causes that sealant to spread and squeeze out on the inside. That gives us the ability from the inside of the wall to know that we have got certain continuity of air barrier at that location. We will also use that continuous sealant approach in between the mud sill connections because obviously we won't get boards that are all perfect continuous. There's gonna be joints. Every corner is gonna have a joint. Every time we have a wood to wood interface, at this level, we'll apply sealant there as well. We go ahead with an oversized mud sill because what we're hoping to do is catch our zip R6 on this outside edge. It's going to stick out past the foundation wall about an inch and a half to two inches and then our zip bar six is gonna land right on top of it. And we will go ahead at that point, do a wood to wood connection with our tape. Our zip tape will go right up onto the zip bar six and wrap underneath this mud sill. Once we're completed with our mud sill and everything's bolted down, then the guys are gonna start popping lines to get their trusses installed. We've got floor trusses coming tomorrow. Then we'll move forward with the subfloor sheathing. We've got a seven eighth Advantix subfloor on this job. So it's a really stout subfloor on top of the open web floor trusses to make it easy to run our mechanicals. And then we're off to the races, we're setting walls. <music> 